Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one, you huskies. Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, if you're looking for the swellest eaten breakfast ever, stop looking right now, because here it is. Treat yourself to the cereal shot from guns. That's the one and only Quaker Pup wheat or rice. Tomorrow, pour out a bowl full, crisp and fresh, right from the big red and blue package, add milk and fruit, and there you have it. A treat that hits the spot, that's nourishing too. Wheat or rice shot from guns furnishes extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Good and good for you. That's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice shot from guns. The long journey from Selkirk northward to Dawson was one that few men in the Yukon cared to make during the strenuous winter season. But Sergeant Preston, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police, with his great dog King, hadn't hesitated to set out by dog sled in spite of the hazards of cold and wind and snow and ice. Ever since the Mountie and his dog had started the trip, snow had been falling steadily. A fine, hard snow that whipped by the wind stung their faces and smarted their eyes. Finally, after traveling several hours, Sergeant Preston halted the dog team for a short rest. Okay, how are you, Husky? Sure a tough time to make the trip to Dawson, boy, but it can't be helped. We ought to get there almost as soon as the two crooks were following, eh, fella? All right, let's get moving, boy. One king, one, you Husky! Some distance ahead of Sergeant Preston and King... Jake Morton, a big, rough-featured man, rode the runners of the dog sled in which his partner, Steve Karen sat. Steve was a smaller man, and his sharp features were not enhanced by the scraggly beard that covered his face. The biting wind and the severe cold penetrated the fur lap robe and even the parka that Steve wore, until finally he complained to Jake. Hey, Jake, I'm about to freeze at this. This range along here would be a good place to dig in for the night. Yeah, maybe. But you know as well as I do that that Mountie Preston and his dog will be on our trail as soon as he hears about that bank robbery in Selkirk. Oh, he's not going to start after us in this kind of weather. <laughs> you don't know, Preston, Steve. That Mountie will set out in any kind of weather to trail somebody. Uh, you think Preston got back to Selkirk from Dundee? Yeah, he was due back this morning. That's why we did that bank job last night and pulled stakes out of there. We got at least a good 12-hour start on him. All the more reason why we can stop a while. I can't take it any longer. All right, stop beefing. We'll stop and dig in under that ledge just ahead. That's more like it. This weather will slow the money down as much as it does us. We don't have to worry. Oh, oh, oh. Jake and Steve yeah, settled are. down in sort of a natural lean-to under the ledge. Yeah. A couple of hours went by. The snow stopped, but the cold seemed to become more intense. Jake, who had decided it was time to be moving on, stood up and took another look back down the trail. The wind was blowing up trail toward him. And even before he saw Sergeant Preston coming along below on the other side of the slight ridge, he could faintly hear the dogs barking. Hey, Steve, I hear dogs down there. Somebody's coming up the trail. Hey, you think it's that money? Yeah. Well, the snow covered our tracks, and the wind's blowing from them to us. That dog of his won't get wise us being in the vicinity. Preston will go right by on that trail below. Hey, look, there he comes. Yeah. Hey, he's just about within rifle range. You're a crack shot, Jake. That's right. Even if I miss the first time, I could pick him off before he found out where the shot came from. I'll try the shot. <laughs> they can use the practice anyway. Meantime, King ran beside his master as the Mountie drove his sled along the trail below the ridge. Once more, the Mountie called a halt for a moment's rest. Okay, oh, yeah. Making good time, King. 
The great tireless dog, King, stood beside his master, waiting for the cry that would start the dog sled on his way. The wind blowing from behind them gave no warning of danger. The trail they were following ran along the edge of a deep ravine, which fell away in icy slopes on Sergeant Preston's right. For a few moments, the Mountie stood motionless, gazing, first at the ridge above and to his left, and then over the glaring wasteland ahead on the sheer icy slope to his right. And then, without warning, a distant shot rang out. Oh! For an instant, Sergeant Preston instinctively fought to keep on his feet. Unfortunately, the few staggering steps he took were enough to take him to the brink of the ravine. I, I can't... I, oh. Falling on the edge of the icy slope, the Mountie slid over the brink and was catapulted down the slope into the snowdrifts in the ravine. As his master fell, King, startled by the sound of the shot, turned ready to streak after the one who had fired it. But he saw no one, nor could he get any scent that would point the way to the hidden person. And then, as the intelligent dog saw Sergeant Preston disappear over the edge of the ravine, he ran back and forth on the brink, whining and barking in frustration. King attempted several times to find a way down, but it was impossible. Then, instinctively, he seemed to know that help was needed. Human help. King remembered a cabin they had passed a few miles back. Humans lived there, and they could help his master. The massive dog gazed down at the ravine where his master had disappeared into the snowdrifts. And then, barking his determination, King turned and raced down the trail. Meantime, up at their hiding place on the ridge, Jake and Steve watched the result of the rifle shot. Jake was about to fire a second shot when they saw Sergeant Preston fall and disappear over the edge of the ravine. Then they saw King race away. Come on, he's done for, all right. The dog must have been scared off by the shot. <laughs> We're in luck, Steve. Uh, good shooting, Jake. Now we don't have to hurry our trip. That's right. Hey, we can use your supplies and blankets. Come on, we're going down there and get them. Right. Kiss us, man. Uh, shut up, you noisy hound. Hey, look, Jake. Here's a bundle. Uh, extra uniform he's carrying with him. Yeah. Mounties uniform, huh? It gives me an idea. But first, I want to make sure he's done for. Let's look over the edge of the ravine. Yeah. yeah I don't see him down there. Must be buried in the snowdrift. Yeah, buried is right. If there was some way to get down there, I'd go down and make sure he's done for. But the only way out of there is to go up about a half mile up trail. The bottom of that ravine slopes up to meet the trail there. It'll take too much time to go up there and then come back down the ravine. That dog might come back here, Jake. Yeah, that's right. If he isn't done for, he was at least wounded and knocked out by that bullet. And he'll freeze to death anyway down there. Now, let's go. What are you going to do with that uniform, Jake? Uh, him and me are about the same size. That uniform ought to fit me. Why do you want to put it on? You can drive our sled. I'll put on that uniform and drive his dogs and sled. I don't get it. If others come hunting us, they'll be looking for two of us with one sled, see? But this way, they'll look someplace else for us, thinking a Mountie and one of his friends went through to Dawson. Yeah, but what about Preston? If they find his body... It's beginning to snow again, so they won't find him for a long, long time. Let's go up to the ledge and I'll change to this uniform. Then we'll be on our way. We'll take this dog sled up there where ours is waiting. Yeah. Preston! Preston! Sergeant Preston lay in the snowdrift at the bottom of the ravine without moving for almost ten minutes. Then he stirred. Oh, oh my head. Struggling in the snow, he finally managed to sit up with a dazed look in his eyes. His hand went to his temple, which had been creased by Jake's bullet. Oh, what happened? I must stay here. I'd freeze to death. Gotta... Gotta get to a cabin. Struggling to his feet, the Mountie stood wavering a moment. He couldn't seem to remember anything. Even his identity was unknown to him at the moment. But long habit instinctively forced him to get moving, to seek shelter. Sergeant Preston gazed about him. And then, with staggering steps, he started walking up the ravine. Meantime, King had reached the cabin back down the trail. He whined and scratched at the door. Hey, what's this? We say, you're king. Sergeant Preston's dog. Hey, come in, fella. Hey, look here, Martha. It's a Mountie's dog, King. Oh, why, so it is. He's trying to tell us something. I'm sure of it. Jed, you better go with him. Get your dog team and follow King. All right, I will. 
Something happened, all right. He wouldn't act like that. Oh, I'll get your parka and things. All right, old fella. Now quiet down. I'm going with you. Hurriedly getting ready, Judd Jenkins hitched up his dog team and set out along the trail with King leading the way. The big dog would run far ahead and then run back barking. In this way, he urged Jed to hurry in spite of the falling snow. When they reached the point where Preston had fallen into the ravine, the snow had covered all traces of the men and dogs. In spite of that, King stopped in approximately the same place and waited for Jed to catch up. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh! Huh. Hey, what's the matter, King? King whined and ran back and forth on the edge of the ravine. Then, in puzzlement, he looked around in desperation for Preston's dog team, sniffing the ground. But the heavy snow that obliterated the tracks of Jake, Steve, and the dogs dulled King's sense of smell. As Jenkins stood watching the great huskies circling, sniffing, and whining, he heard another dog team approaching from up trail. Jenkins called out. Hey! Hey there! down the trail that you come, mister. All right, now I come about three miles from the Hadley cabin. I come through from Dawson and hold up there last night out of the storm. Yes, I know Jim Hadley, Joe Prospect. That's the one, mister. Something awful has happened. Yeah? What? I was out back of the cabin, got my dog team together to push on to Selkirk. I saw two dog teams stop out front and a Mountie went inside. A Mountie, huh? Well, that must have been Sergeant Preston. Maybe so. <laughs> I'm going to Selkirk to report what happened. I heard a shot. Then the Mallee came out and they started on up the trail. I found Jim Hadley's cabin ransacked, and Jim Hadley is dead. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Man, oh man, the football season is really underway. And when you're cheering for your favorite big-time team, you'll want to know what the team colors are and what the school flag or pennant looks like. So hurry, start collecting the key new series of official college football pennant cutouts now on all new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. There are 48 famous authentic pennants or flags in all, printed right on the backs of eight different packages of the cereals shot from guns. And they're yours at no extra cost. Right now at your grocers. You send in no money, no box tops, no coupons. That's how easy it is to start collecting these 48 different colored pennants of leading colleges like, uh, well, like Army, Navy, Notre Dame, California, Pennsylvania, and Southern Methodist, just to name a few. These flags are all yours at no extra cost. Just hurry to your grocer. Ask for special new packages of wheat or rice shot from guns. Look for the same familiar big red and blue Quaker package. On the back, get colorful, authentic college pennants. And remember... You get them only on packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. Jed Jenkins, the man whom King had brought back to help Sergeant Preston, met a traveler who told him a Mountie had shot and killed an old prospector, Jim Hadley, a few miles up the trail. For a moment, Jed Jenkins was stunned by the news. Then he spoke. Are you sure it was a Mountie you saw go into Hadley's cabin, mister? Yeah, a big fella, broad-shouldered. Had a fine team of dogs, too, it looked like. I can't believe it. The only Mountie I know of who's traveling up this way now is Sergeant Preston. Then it was him who killed Hadley and robbed him. But man alive, it couldn't be. Preston wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, this Mountie did, mister. I'm going to report it in Selkirk before he gets too far away. Well, I... I don't know just what to say... King, I guess we'd better go back to my cabin. No use going any further. That's a fine dog you've got there. It ain't mine. That's King, Sergeant Preston's dog. He come to my cabin acting funny. Well, I guess I'll turn around and play along with you, mister. Come on, King. Looks like the next criminal you track down is going to be your own master, Sergeant Preston. Well, come on, boy. Looks like you're wrong, mister. That dog don't want to go back with you. Keeps running back and forth along the edge of that ravine. Well, I can't leave him here. Hey, look. He's running up the trail. He's leaving us. Well, that's set. Well, come on. Let's get going. Mercy! Oh, oh, oh. Me? <laughs> Intelligent dog knew Sergeant Preston needed help and was heading back down the ravine to find him when suddenly, sniffing the ground, he stopped. 
a scent. The fresh scent of his master was on the ground before him. King had found Preston's tracks as he wandered up the ravine. With a yelp of delight, the dog moved slowly, sniffing as he went. He was going to find his master somehow. For some time, Sergeant Preston had wandered aimlessly, pushing on through the falling snow with only the thought in mind of finding shelter. He had followed the ravine until finally he got out of it and unknowingly trudged along the uptrail. He still suffered from loss of memory, and the constant effort to remember caused him to become edgy and unnerved. Once he heard a wolf howl behind him. He stopped and listened, then in panic drew his gun and fired a shot behind him. Then he stood listening, perspiration standing out on his forehead in spite of the intense cold. Finally, controlling his nerves, Preston put his gun back in the holster. Never before having experienced panic under any circumstances, the new emotion affected him. I have to get a hold of myself. Can't let things unnerve me like that. Oh, if I could only remember. Oh, I see wind. I have to find shelter. I have to. After walking for what seemed to be an endless amount of time, Sergeant Preston saw something loom out of the storm ahead. A cabin. Shelter at last. A cabin. Now I can get shelter. Maybe they can help me find out who I am, what I'm doing out here. It's getting darker. Someone must be in there. Maybe the door's unlocked. Anyone here? The Mountie, weak and worn, entered the cabin. The interior was dim and shadowy as Preston made his way from the door. His groping hands found a chair near a table. Must sit down. Must rest. With a sigh of utter weariness, Sergeant Preston sank into the chair. And resting his arms on the table, he lay his head upon them and closed his eyes in almost instant sleep. Sergeant Preston had no idea how long he had slept. As consciousness returned to him, he at first thought he must be in his own cabin. And even before he raised his head, he heard King whining at his side. The Mountie, even in that instant, remembered everything. Oh. How he and King had started out after Jake and Steve. Uh -huh. The shot on the trail. But then what happened? How was it he was sitting in a chair with his head resting on his arms like this? He raised his head to look about him. King, fellow. Don't what, move, what? Sergeant. I have your gun. I found King here whining at the door. Harry Wilson from headquarters. Why, why are you holding that gun on me? You ought to know why, Sergeant. The man you murdered is right over there in the bunk. man I murdered? Why, there what? There we are. But man alive, Harry. I don't get this at all. How'd I get here in this cabin? What makes you think I murdered anyone? This is Jim Hadley's cabin, Sergeant. Prospector coming down the trail yesterday afternoon heard a shot. Saw you leaving the cabin. You went up trail with another fella. Prospector was back at the lean-to with his dogs when it happened. We can't figure out why you came back here this morning, Sergeant, or where you left your dog team. No. No, I didn't do it. I... I'm sure I... Sergeant Preston stopped speaking. Wild thoughts raced through his mind. Jed had mentioned that the killing took place yesterday afternoon. Just now, his brother, Mountie Harry Wilson, spoke of it being morning. Yet from the time of the shot until now, he couldn't remember a thing. Harry, I... I know I couldn't have done it. I knew Jim Hadley well. I was trailing the two men who broke into the bank at Selkirk. I know that, Sergeant. I remember stopping on the trail for a moment. I remember hearing a shot... That's all I do remember until right this minute. Maybe so, Sergeant. But the fact remains that the prospector came and reported a big Mountie leaving here after Hadley was shot. Then when we arrive here to investigate, I find you here. Why you came back, I can't figure wait, out. Wait, you... wait, Harry. My gun, it's still fully loaded, and you're smart enough to know if it'd been fired within the time you say Hadley was killed, and now... I looked at your gun, Sergeant. One bullet has been fired recently. What? Jenkins can bear me out on that. I let him check on it, too. That's right. One bullet's missing right now. But I didn't do it, I tell you. If you can't remember as you say, how can you be sure? Well, well, I... Again, the doubt came back into Preston's mind. He looked at King, placing his hand on the big dog's head. <laughs> then, realizing that something must be done to prove to the others and to himself that he wasn't guilty of killing Hadley, Preston hit upon the first thought that came into his mind. Harry, I know things look bad for me. I feel definitely that I could never commit murder, and I, I want you to help me. To give me a chance to prove the facts, whatever they may turn out to be. Well, as, as one member of the force to another, look, man, I... Look, you can't deny me this. I give my word of honor, 
If you'll take time to work on this with me, and we find that I... that I... All right, Sergeant. I'll work on it with you. But if we don't prove something by tomorrow, I'll have to take you in for murder. After arranging with Jed Jenkins to take Hadley's body back to Selkirk, Harry Wilson waited until he had left, then had another talk with Sergeant Preston. Now, let's see where we begin, Sergeant. I, I can't let you have your gun, of course, but I have your word of honor you won't attempt to escape. That's right, I won't, Harry. Now, this mark on my temple proves what I said about the shot I mentioned. That's right. I do remember following the two crooks up to that point, and then... Harry... I know the answer. It must be the answer. Well? The extra uniform. That's it. It must be. Extra uniform? Yes, I had one of my old uniforms bundled on my sled. It needed repairs. But I don't see But don't you that... see, Harry? Now, look. One of those cooks could have used it. They must have taken my sled. Though, I don't know how they got away with it with King around. That's what puzzles me. King went back to Jed Jenkins' cabin for something. Remember? Yes. Yes, that's right. When I was shot, King must have gone for help. While he was gone, the two crooks took my sled and lit out up trail. That could be. Let's start out now after them. If we find them, we can get the answer. What about it? All right, get your things on, Sergeant. And I hope for your sake that we do catch them. And prove once and for all who did kill Hadley. I'll get the dog team ready. All that night, Sergeant Preston, with King and the other Mountie, pushed on toward Dawson. Finally, a few miles outside of the town, King picked up the scent of Preston's own dog team. He leaped and barked in excitement. King's found the trail of my dogs, Harry. On King! On you, Huskies! The trail that King now followed swerved from the main trail into Dawson. They turned off before getting into Dawson. Looks like it, all right. After going a short distance, Preston, not wanting once more to be a target for the crooks, ordered King to quiet the dog team. Quiet them, King. Quiet them, fella. Hold them down, boy. That's it. In an old cabin off the beaten trail, Jake and Steve had built a fire in the fireplace. Then Jake started the change from the Mounties' uniform back into his own clothes. Yeah, that bag of gold we took from the old sourdough will come in handy. Even if we did get a good haul from the bank in Sulker. I thought you were going to keep the uniform on. <laughs> yeah, after shooting that old man, I better not. The man who was out and back got a glimpse of me as I left. <laughs> he'll report a Mountie killed the old codger and he'll go hunting Preston. <laughs> That's a hot one. I always thought that dog of his was a mean one. Can't understand him running away like he did. I guess when he saw Preston wasn't able to tell him what to do, he got scared. <laughs> Don't believe all you've heard about that Mountie and his dog. Yeah, better burn this uniform. Hey, listen, Jake. Dogs are raising a fuss out there. Yeah, I'll get rid of the uniform when we come back in. Come on, we'll see what's going on. Get your gun handy. Right. Hey, you see anybody? No. Let's take a look around back for the dogs. Huh? I wonder what sent them off. Shut up, you crazy mutt. Oh, maybe they saw a bear or something. Well, I don't see anything. Hey, look, Jake. There's footprints around the other side of the cabin. Are you crazy, Glue? Two sets of them and runner marks. We made those tracks ourselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there weren't any tracks on the side we came around just now. Uh, let's get back in. It's cold. Yeah, right? hurry up. I'm freezing. Look behind the door. Uh, two Mounties. Don't move, either of you. That's Preston. We left him wounded in a ravine. Yeah, this will settle him for good. King, standing behind Preston and Harry, had been unobserved for the moment. When the great dog saw the gun pointed at his master, he sprang in one mighty, snarling leap at Jake, grabbing his gun arm. Listen, the dog. Help. Get him off. Help. I'll settle that dog. Oh, you don't. Oh, oh. Take him off. He'll kill me. Down, King. Down, fella. That's it. I didn't see that dog behind you. Well, you and King do all right without a gun, Sergeant. Thanks, Harry. Now, the two of you get over there on the bunk. Get over there. All right. Watch them, King, while we tie them up. Here's some rawhide strips. They'll do, sir. Thanks. Look over there, Harry. The uniform one of them wore when they killed old Hadley. You can't prove a thing. We'll see about that. We're not making tracks. I don't see how we you We were did. careful to move in your tracks when we approached. We were behind the snowbank till you went around back, and we came inside. There. Uh, that'll hold you. I'll look out back and see if your dog team is there, Sergeant. That uniform proves you killed Hadley. Both of you will hang for it. Having a uniform don't prove a thing. Yeah, too bad we couldn't get down in that ravine to finish this money off when we had the chance. If you hadn't slid down there, we'd have finished them off. You can bet on that. Your dogs are split out back, Sergeant. And I found the money box from the bank. Good. I was trailing them because of that bank robbery. All right. Take us in for the robbery. But you can't pin that killing on us. That uniform there is going to help prove it. Sergeant, I... I admit they do have that extra uniform, but I still... Wait, don't... Harry. I have an idea maybe King can make them tell the truth about Hadley. Hey, you wouldn't sick that dog on us. Not while you have your hands and feet tied. Shall I untie them and see if King can get you to talk? Think you can, King? 
No, no, don't do it. Keep him away from me. I had nothing to do with killing Hadley. Honest, I didn't. I didn't even go into the cabin. And you case. were at Hadley's cabin. Shut up, Steve. Teak wore the uniform. We thought Preston was dead in a ravine. Teak went in the cabin alone. Honest, he did. It was Teak that shot Preston. Why, well, you dirty double crosser. Well, you've heard enough to clear you, Sergeant. Like heaven for that, since I can't remember a thing from the time of the shot until you found me at Hadley's cabin. You. You mean they thought you killed Hadley? Holy smoke, Steve, it was working out as I planned if you'd have kept your big mouth. Oh, that's it. enough. Thanks to King, we learned the truth. It's a great relief to me, Harry. It's a good thing they didn't get a chance to dispose of that uniform, Sergeant. Yes, it'll be needed as evidence. Well, now that we've got the truth, Sergeant, here's your gun. Oh, thanks, Harry. <laughs> Not that you need one. In fact, I... <laughs> I feel kind of foolish after seeing how you and King caught these two without a gun. Oh? Huh? I should have realized that if you had killed Hadley, you could have easily turned the tables on me there at his cabin. King and I never thought of acting against a man who's in the service of the Queen, eh, King? <laughs> and for once, Harry, my mind's greatly relieved when I say this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Man, oh man, you're in for terrific news. Big news. News with a capital N. Yes, sirree, right here on this very program, you're going to hear about something you've always wanted. And you'll have a chance to get one, too. Right here and now, make a date to be listening to this program on Wednesday. That's this coming Wednesday, the day after tomorrow. You're in for a surprise, so don't miss out. And here's a tip. Be all set. Have pencil and paper handy. Whatever you do, don't miss Challenge of the Yukon on Wednesday. That's the day after tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Record Run. The trail from Dawson in the Yukon Territory to St. Michael on the Bering Sea is over a thousand miles long, and it cuts through some of the wildest and loneliest country in the world. Wednesday's broadcast tells how King and I made that trip. We had to get to St. Michael fast because the future of one of our friends was at stake. We couldn't let anything stop us, wolves or blizzards or outlaws. I'm sure you'll enjoy hearing about it. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.